where do you sit at the table? Do you dare to take up some space, put your stuff on the table, or do you really harvest everything around you? These little things, you know, and when it comes to body language, when you feel that you're genuine and when you feel you have confidence, uh, it shows and people people when you show confidence people immediately f see you as more trustworthy What's up everybody and welcome to the show today we drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified and in order to do that you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and if you've gotten a lot of value out of this make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends I once was allowed to teach about self-marketing and presentation and one person stood out um, because his suit was three sizes too big so you know, I addressed it and 18 months later, he almost ran up to me because we met again in a, in a different setting. And he said, I never realized how important a different suit can be because what happened, people gave him more compliments, but also people came towards him. His networking became better because he had a different suit that made him feel different, but also made him look less sloppy, you could say. I love all that. And to add to that, for myself, as a musician, I perform quite regularly. And I will yeah. dress according to what I want to project from the stage. Or I will also dress to, to be a certain character that will fit in with the band that I am playing. So I, I'll use dress as something that, that will uh, help me perform and project something or to fit in and move the whole visual to, uh, to a different place. And so I can fully understand that. And I can also say in times, or this has been some Halloween shows or shows that we had dressed up outside of character just for fun, for an effect, and how odd I had felt in dealing with that um, because it had altered not only my playing, how I felt on stage. And when I'm in front of people in that capacity, I wanna feel as comfortable as possible because I wanna to elevate to the music. I don't wanna be second guessing or being self-conscious while all these people are staring at me. And that <laughs> outfit could do that. Yeah, so they're focusing on, they're not focusing on the music, but like, what is he wearing? Definitely, yeah. What, what were you wearing, AJ, when, when it was Halloween? <laughs> oh, so for me, I, I like going with the scrubs, going with the uniform, so yeah. playing doctor. I was yeah. a pre-med student back in the day, so I, I find scrubs to be comfy, but also give you that effect, that impact in a costume. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Amy Cuddy, and one of our favorite quotes from her that she discusses becoming trustworthy. We often make the mistake in work situations of showing off our skills and our strengths before showing that we are trustworthy. And I know many in our audience are at that point in their career where they're looking to get ahead, looking to become a leader, and being trustworthy is gonna be one of those markers for success in your career. What are some of the easiest ways that we can begin to communicate that we are trustworthy in the workplace? Yeah, that's a great question. One of the things I, again, would address is know yourself. Who am I and what do I bring? You know, what, what do I bring to the table? Because trustworthiness starts with knowing yourself because you have to be genuine. You have to realize if, if, you, if you are quiet, if you're an introvert, be that person. Don't try to be somebody else, um, but also realize what does the effect what is the effect? And if you know that, then you can you can communicate about who you are and what the again what the effect is that you have. But knowing yourself and knowing what your behavior is and actually being genuine about that and knowing your qualities and pitfalls that come with that, that is really helpful becoming trustworthy. And I would also say one of the elements is knowing what you cannot do. So being open and maybe even kind of, um, how would we say this, humble 
uh, when it comes to starting because sometimes I work with young people, young clients, and they think they can do anything. So they're so focused on going up that ladder and they have this ambition showing off their skills. But knowing that you are still, you're learning, be humble, try to figure out things. That helps as well. Definitely agree with that. I think many of us, when we fall into the showing off and trying to prove ourselves, we actually tip towards faking it until we make it, which actually sends the, the wrong signals, makes us less trustworthy and puts people on edge subconsciously. And I think one of the, the greatest signals that we talk about in our program is just working on the confidence to hold eye contact when speaking. So I know many in our audience early in their career, if they don't feel that they belong in the room, they're struggling with imposter syndrome mm -hmm. or self-doubt, it can be really difficult to look people in the eyes when you're communicating, but that does convey a level of confidence and start to build that trust that you need in a leadership role. Yeah, exactly. And also realizing that when you come into a room, it's not, it's not just eye contact, but also where do you sit at the table? Do you dare to take up some space, put your stuff on the table, or do you really harvest everything around you? These little things, you know, and when it comes to body language, when you feel that you're genuine and when you feel you have confidence, uh, it shows and people, people, when you show confidence, people immediately see you as more trustworthy. We drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. You're, we're discussing, th you were talking about the little things and the niceties and where to sit and, and, and this and that. And a lot of that just comes from a lot of socialization, especially as a child, as you're learning these things and you're learning to be cooperative with the other children, you're learning to read uh, subconsciously the micro expressions. And we're now going into almost what, year two of this pandemic where, where these children are wearing masks, where they're separated, where they're not interacting. And what do you see in the future of this? And, and what are your thoughts on for these children where perhaps they can uh, compensate for what they're losing uh, at school. Mm -hmm. Let, let's not forget that even with a mask, we can still see a lot in nonverbal communication. We're wired to see everything else now, and especially children. I had an uh, interaction the other day wearing a mask in a metro, and we were smiling, but, well, of course they couldn't see my mouth, but you can see it in the eyes, and you know, you can make your eyes bigger. So a lot is still drawn from uh, nonverbal communication without a mask. But I think that um, the interaction, which would be different because a lot of people are on Zoom or digital homeschooling, that is very interesting what's going to happen there. If people are aware of, for instance, proximity, um, I would say there was, there was a recent uh, situation where people went back to school or children went back to school and they were all in shock because they've kind of forgotten how the other persons were behaving. Uh, were, so the, 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 you know, the, the, um, the way they behaved was different than when it was digital. So I think it's, it, it's going to be a challenge for people to pick up on who, how are we interacting? Even with myself, you know, a lot of sessions I do are live, of course, and they're in large audiences, so you are yeah. addressing a lot of people. Uh, and you can read the body language, of course, in a different way when you see the whole body. But uh, yeah, it's, I even have to, it's different to go back to it and to see a lot of things going on. You have a lot of impulses. People have to be calm about it even, or they have to uh, readjust. Yeah, I think it's like a re-entry almost. Re-entry, that's even, a better word. <laughs> we've talked about this on the show. Uh, I'm feeling social anxiety, even though yeah. we teach clients how to communicate more effectively, simply because this experience has gone away for the last year and a half. I hadn't been in the room with other people. And you mentioned presenting, and I think this is a real challenge now because uh, when we were taught to speak on stage, we're taught to take up a little bit more space, actually work the stage. We have more 
ability to use our hands to communicate. And here we are communicating over video and we have this nice little tiny box here. So how have you changed your presentation style and, and skills over Zoom versus being in front of an audience? And you, you brought up a key point. Right now, we don't have that ability to read the audience and their response. No. You know, we don't have a thousand little tiny boxes that we can stare at while we're presenting to see those cues back as a speaker. So how have you adjusted to speaking in this new environment digitally? Yeah, I, I still try to observe. So I'm seeing Johnny adjusting his hair and everything. So I'm trying to read it. <laughs> no, that's just an observation. Um, one of the things, if I reflect on myself, I had to tone it down. When you say you work the stage, it starts when you, when you present yourself, it just doesn't start when you start your speech on stage. It starts when you enter this venue, when you're in the building, everything. And now it's just, okay, five minutes before you put on the video and it starts. So that is an adjustment from my side that I had to get into the, to the setting by myself without being in a venue where you chat a bit with others. So that was a big adjustment. There's an atmosphere there when you're live and you're yes. in person and there's an energy from the crowd that that fires you up or or puts you in a position where you have to work a little bit more for it and it's you don't have that on the screen and no. and it's 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 difficult we're all adjusting we're human beings we can adapt to anything but I know I certainly miss being in the room with a with with people and feeding off their energy and and using that to propel myself into either playing yes. on stage or to, to network. Yes, it's hard because for you you don't exactly as you say you don't feel the energy, but I would say even worse, sometimes people are not aware of their behavior, so they're watching somewhere else or they're or <laughs> I even had somebody and I made that very personal who was laying like this yep. during a speech. Yeah. Being a body language expert, I addressed it, which was fantastic because we could use it in the in the setting. But it is it's very very difficult to one not make it personal how people are on the other side, but also to get yourself energized on. Okay, I have to create an energy or a vibe that normally would come with everybody being present and in a venue. 